Namaste. Namaste. Welcome to Birdistan. I am a, a person who is prepared to be a, a great worldwide ornithologist while this is Rose Kate De Silva. And this is Max De Silva. Hmm. We both are going to discuss different birds on every session. So if you like birding, if you love birds, this is the right place. This is one stop for all information that you will need to know for birds. Today we are going to cover what is the bird wax? Alexandrian parakeet. Alexandrian Scientific parakeet. Scientific name? Yes. The Cytacula mm-hmm. eupatria. Eupatria. Mm. Eupatria, Eupatria, Cytocla, Eupatria, Eupatria. That is the nominate form found locally here in the Western Ghats where we live. Uh, Western Ghats, if you are for the first time listening to this term, is uh, considered to be the western coast of India. So the peninsular side of western India is called Western Ghats, where we see several bird species. Most of them are native and some of them come migrating here. One of uh, the natives we can call because they are found throughout the year in India is Alexandrian parakeet. Uh, Max, how do we know when we see a, an Alexandrian parakeet? It is the one. Well, there is a more common rosewing parakeet. You can mm-hmm. differentiate the two mm-hmm. because the Alexandrian parakeet, it has red shoulder pads and it has a mm-hmm. light blue gray seen on the lower cheek and the nape. Okay. Ah. Okay, and it has a massive red beak compared to the tiny rosewing's beak. Mm-hmm. And also much bigger in size, 56 to 62 centimeters and it weighs 200 to 300 grams. Oh. The abdomen is yellow green and while the upper tail is green mm-hmm. and further down it appears blue and the blue no, ends and, a yellow, and the tail becomes yellow tipped. Okay. The underside of the tail is completely yellow. Yellow. Hmm. Okay, so that was quite a description of how the Alexandrian parakeets look. Hmm. Uh, by the way, why do we call them parakeets? I thought they were all called parrots. Well, they're called parakeets because they're a small variety of parrot. Parrot is basically uh-huh. a big bird with the hook bill or the bill that we know. The roundest bill. Uh, the bigger ones? Yes. So how big would be the parrot if this is called a parakeet? Because this is quite long. This is like two... Two feet tall or long bird. You have the African grey parrot, you have the um, macaws, then the scarred macaw. They can grow pretty big. They can, big? can grow like four feet. Four feet. Okay, so almost double of these yes. people. So they are going to cover all of this area. Yes. Right? And also the Alexander is not, is just a medium sized parakeet. They, there's even bigger than this. Even in parakeets, they are yes. supposed to be medium. Okay, that's quite descriptive. Of how they look, how you identify uh, from the normal parrots that we parakeets that we get in India, the rose ring parakeets are usually only green color, with the males having uh, darker red or blackish uh, rings around pink, their neck. Pink, pink, it's pink green. hue as well. Yes, right? female does not have a. And pink females one. have none of that. Then, if you want to identify the adult female of the Alexandrian parakeet, mm-hmm. they normally lack the uh, blue gray seen on lower cheek and the nape. Okay. So they are completely clear, just green neck. Just green neck. Yes. But they also will have the red color on yes. the shoulders. Yes, the red patch. Juveniles are almost adults. Mm-hmm. You can say teenagers in simple terms in the bird world since okay. they are not real teenagers. Uh-huh. And their tail is short compared to the females. Okay. Look like females but shorter tail. But do they have the red patches? Yes. Okay, so red patches but shorter than the rest are supposed to be the juveniles. Mm. Okay. Um, do we know where do they live? Where do we find them? Mm, you can find in five subspecies. Three subspecies are found in India. Mm-hmm. One is the Saita Kula mm-hmm. Eupatria Eupatria. It's a nominate form mm-hmm. found near primarily in the Western Ghats and Central India. You can so what is the nominate India. form? Basically it is the uh, subspecies mm-hmm. which gave rise to all the other subspecies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So this is the subspecies of parakeets mm-hmm. that gives like an about origin. fifty lakh years ago. It gave rise mm-hmm. to all the remaining four subspecies. Fifty lakh would be like five million years ago mm-hmm. that the subspecies came about. Mm-hmm. So we are looking at historic birds here. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Oh, wow. This is interesting. And uh, they, they, the nominate form is from this part, you say. Yes. Perfect. So they kind of are originate 
selected from here yes. and um, now what time of the year do we find them mostly mm, what time there's no weird time but there is a breeding season when you see a burst of juveniles after the breeding season you see a lot of juveniles so coming what's up. the time of the year which is a breeding season november to april okay after this you may see juveniles okay so like almost the entire winter mm. and to, from up to the start of the mm. summer mm. perfect uh, uh, where do they live what is the nesting they live in tree hollows they make the nest in a tree hollow mm -hmm. both the male and female will work in cut the nest and how do they cut the nest like they have a saw or something no they use already existing nest sometimes they excavate a dirty nest which is already been used in the past uh -huh. or they sometimes can live inside cracks or holes in old buildings all right so uh, with their beak they go on excavating the nest well they do not really uh, make the entire nest to tree hole they, it's already used they just clean it up just clean it up mm -hmm. so wherever there is hollow tree they just mm -hmm. go into it yes. and they start living all right and how do they take care of their nestlings mm -hmm. they take care of the nestlings there's no one really has documented what do they really eat it's not well documented this bird okay but for sure we know that the nestlings take about 7 weeks to learn to fly and become fledglings fledglings and they become independent from the parents are uh, in 3 months of age 3 months the parenting is done for alexandrian parakeet it's a very long time in bird terms in human terms it may be really short yeah but for birds it is a long long yes. time 3 months of training mm. training them almost every day mm. uh, okay max and how many eggs do they lay each time 2 mm. to 4 only 2 to 4 Hmm. how would how big would be the eggs they are ovless and blunt and they're chalky white chalky white so are they this big this big this big this big this big hmm. like a quail's egg like 10 cm hmm. yes yes yeah or millimeters 10 mm oh you said centimeters it would make it really big yeah i know that would make it this <laughs> big so this is 10 cm 10 mm <laughs> i'm sorry this is 10 mm like 1 cm roughly right. sometimes roughly. eggs could be bigger smaller it needs research but normally this is the size okay and how many years uh, an alexandrian parrot parakeet lives What 20, is the lifespan? Twenty-five to thirty. In captivity, it can be extended by one entire decade, making it forty years. Wow! So if you are, if you are lucky enough to have Alexandrian parakeets in your area, like we have right now, when we we are recording our video as well, we can hear the parakeets. I am not too sure about whether the camera is capturing the sound for you as well, but they are already you know making sounds. They are quite loud, and we have a big flock. I can call. I think twenty to thirty birds at a time would be considered a big. The flock, flocks right? become bigger according to food. They mainly eat nuts, seeds, fruit. They also do great damage to jowa and maize. Oh, flocks become bigger according to food abundance. So they can also become a menace to the farmers. Mm. I've heard that. Uh, so depending upon the availability of the food, they get attracted more and more and more. And um, I've heard that they can. get up to 300 in a flock as well sometimes as occasionally if the farmer has multiple white crops uh -huh. that's hard for the farmer but i'm very happy that alexandrian parakeets are flourishing these days uh, because they they have been uh, in the near threatened status for a while now yes and yes. the reason is due to the steep decline and habitat loss and oh. persecution and, and mainly caging We advise the audience to not pet them, no matter how much they're tempted. Yes, you But may love them. But let them be free. You may love them, and you may get attracted and may get tempted to pet them because they can also mimic humans and they can uh, learn many many human words. They also consider playful. Don't be tempted. They are. But don't be tempted to. keep them in a cage mm. you can enjoy them outside your window if you happen to be lucky or you can visit your uh, nearby parks if they happen to be there they just look marvelous they are long slender wonderful looking birds they are always playing they are always busy uh, certain people in europe are actually lucky to see it in spain and also you can find it these days fever populations are there so in switch europe now wow 
So if we have Spanish audience, they can see it too. They keep expanding the range. Okay. So luckily they are coming back again with the numbers, mm. and hopefully they will get out of the near threatened status, and they will come into least concerned. Uh, Till then, we will wait and you will wait to see whether that happens or not. We will keep making more videos on many more birds uh, that we both like and we both have them around our home. So that first we are covering all the birds that we personally know and we have an experience of them living around us and what exactly they are like. If you have any bird in your mind that you want us to make a detailed video like this, you can request that. So how many days or months maybe the hatchlings take to be independent? Three months. Three months. So all three months they are going to be taken care by the parents. Yes. It takes uh, seven weeks for them mm -hmm. to learn to fly and grow feathers. Turn okay. into fledglings. Okay. Okay. Three months is a long time in bird terms. Yeah. When... In our eggs and in packets, life is only 25 to 30 years. It's a long time. Oh, their lifespan is 25 to 30 years. That's long. That's not bad. Yes. That's definitely not bad. So the parrots that we have now, we probably will have for the next decade or two if they don't move out of here or mm. something, you know, doesn't go wrong. Uh, sometimes there is lack of food that mm. they that can drive them away from here. Yes. Usually they go to areas with abundance of food. Very what they eat? Well, they eat seeds, nuts, fruits, mm. a very large variety of it, wild and cultivated. And they also are known to cause the menace to farmers who farm jowar and maize. Jowar and maize. So they go and start just eating without taking any permission. Yes, large flocks occur where food is abundant and, and if it's... It's ripe, then large flocks occur on the farms. How large is this large flock? Like how many? 300. Up to 300? Can Not up to, you huh? can say at least. At least 300. That is a large flock of a, uh, of Alexandrian parakeet? If the farm is even bigger, a very massive industrial farm, then the damage will be more severe with very massive populations appearing. Oh. So now we know how how much they can eat. They can definitely eat a lot. As far as, as I know, uh, their flock size depends on the food available. Mm -hmm. So if uh, in a locality they, there is actually an abundance of food, they are going to be seen more and the flock size can get bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. like Max discussed. Uh, right now in our locality, we have about what, 25 to 35. Yes. Yeah, because at a time we ourselves... Uh, spot them in large groups uh, such as 18 to 20 uh, on the very next tree that we have outside a window which is called neem tree uh, they are often over here feeding on the fruits of the neem and uh, they spend hours at a time they are relaxed they just keep on nibbling on the neem fruits yes. and they keep on uh, uh, what would it be called swinging going upside down mm. on the small twigs and the branches mm, yes. of the tree. It is a wonderful sight to see them, but it is not so wonderful to keep them because one of the primary reasons of it being in a near threatened status, yes, they are not least concerned. They are in the status of near threatened because... Near threatened, you call it? They are near threatened because of the steep decline in, which mm -hmm. is happening because of habitat loss, persecution and caging. Because of caging. And why do people like to cage them? Well, because they like looking at them and they can mimic human speech and they are playful and they, their lifespan is extended by uh, one decade. But you shouldn't buy it. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Uh, people love to keep them because they can be nice companions. Yes, uh, in certain countries you cannot keep it, I advise you. So mm -hmm. please do not get motivated yeah, to buy it. Yeah, it can be illegal. In certain be. countries... It's it's illegal, so please be advised. That's a nice thing that governments do take care of such things. Uh, because of also the declining population of these wonderful parrots, they look striking. Uh, they are wonderful to have around. They are always making some sound or the other. So their calls are wonderful. It's a pleasant thing whenever they are uh, active around you because your day is active and they are just uh, making the sounds, all the clocks and all that. Right now, maybe if the camera is capturing, you can hear. Uh, they are a wonderful uh, company for you, but they shouldn't be kept inside. They are big birds, moderate big. Yes. Like two feet, it's not bad. I can explain the sounds they make. Yes, please. They make a wow. winking and true. 
and, and they make a kick. Mm -hmm. Then they can make clack, 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 clack. clack, clack. The I sound know. then their voice is deeper compared to other parakeets. Okay. And also it can get deeper and louder when they are mobbing predators. Mobbing predators? Can they do that? Yes. Wow, that's fascinating. What do they do in mobbing? Basically, mobbing is a strategy of animal to be in a big group and try to scare away a predator from um, their young. Uh -huh. Mainly in birds it happens. Mobbing. Right. So they mob attack a predator. Yes. Wonderful. Occasionally, in flocks, they can and vocalize excitingly, making it even louder. So you, some people may think it's too loud also. Yeah, they can go really mm -hmm. loud. You can actually realize that they are pretty loud when they are around. Yes. Uh, so we have discussed their habitat, we have discussed their family pattern, how they breed. Uh, what are the times of the breeding again? From November to April. Yes. Right? Perfect. Uh, and um, they can be seen throughout the year. Mm. At least where we live, they are uh, they are spotted throughout the year. They are always around us. Sometimes certain days, uh, maybe they are in their nest, they are quieter. But certain days they are pretty active. And they are there are five subspecies of Alexandrian found in the world. Out of okay. three are found here in India. Okay. Hmm. One is Cytopacula eupatria. 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 Two times eupatria. It's the binomial name is Cytopacula eupatria. This is the nominate form. That's why eupatria is repeated. And what is a nominate form? Means a subspecies mm -hmm. which gave origin mm -hmm. into all the other subspecies. Okay, so the Alexandrian parakeet is a subspecies of parakeets, right? Not subspecies of parakeets. The Alexandrian parakeet is a species of parakeets and the subspecies is part of the species of Alexandrian parakeet. Okay, okay, okay. And the Cytopula eupatria eupatria is a subspecies of that. Yes, it is the 50 lakh years ago. Uh, it gave Five origin million to years ago. all the other subspecies of Alexandrian parakeet. Okay. Then great. the second one is mm. Satacula eupatria nipensis. Nipensis. Okay. So they are found in India, these three. Yes, but mainly central, not India. Mm -hmm. uh, only the eupatria eupatria is found here. The other two subspecies are found not in central. Okay. Not a problem because I am having abundance of them around and that's enough then the us. third subspecies is uh -huh. the satacula eupatria uh -huh. avenis avenis okay so these are scientific names in case you are interested in knowing them max likes to keep them handy so that he mm. can just uh, give it to people who are interested in it as i mentioned this is going to be one stop solution to all the bird knowledge that you would want to know about any bird well these scientific names are only for scientists and people who have uh, who work in this field of study yes it's not useful for general public so i'm just saying for those who are interested very kind of you hmm. isn't it uh, so these birds can be wonderful to have around but not inside your house so we both advise uh, against keeping them in captivity caging them just for fun or maybe for companionship for your children uh, we should not misuse nature like that we can look outside our window we can get out of the house and spot them in the park or something wherever we can find them uh, but keeping them inside the home is not the solution for bird watching or birding this is what we stand for you must always whenever you get a chance look at the birds it helps you a lot in many ways than you may have thought of but keeping them in cage is definitely not done so max before we end this video just a small recap on hmm. how a person who's never seen alexandrian parakeet can identify it upon seeing it for the first time ever it is mainly the shoulder patch that differentiated from most other parakeets the a light blue gray sheen in can still be mistaken for any other parakeet because okay. there are certain parakeets who have that sheen or beard <laughs> on the throat. Beard. <laughs> <laughs> they have beards as well in the parakeet. Bearded parakeet, for example. <laughs> All right, but this one doesn't. Yes, this yeah. one has something similar to that. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the only thing that will give away for sure that this is an Alexandrian parakeet is the red patches on both sides of the shoulders. Yes, but if it is... Beginning of the wings. Hmm. Hmm. But if it is in flight, then 
You the only way to identify from any other parakeet if it's flat is the size now. Yes. Right. And the tail color, of course. And the tail color that we will see yes. from down is yellowish. Yes, but that could also be a rosewing parakeet. Also, rosewing parakeets also have the same tail True. color. True. True. When in flight. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what's the size. Like I'll tell you again, fifty six to sixty two centimeters is there, and they weigh two hundred to three hundred grams. So you should know the exact size if you need to make out also you no know, try to compare to other bird sizes so you understand it <laughs> properly true because at best it only is green you may not even see the beak also you the only thing you see is the tail and the abdomen that's all which is the abdomen is green or yellow common to the rose mm. ring and everybody else yes all package packets in fact have similar teens <laughs> it's impossible to identify it easily in flight but when you see it properly you will know this is the shoulder pads also cannot be seen in flight yes of course because they are on the <laughs> upper side yes all right so the best part is that the red patch on the sides will give away that this is for sure an alexandrian parakeet as well as when you see a ring around for the male mm -hmm. and when there is no ring around that is a female so that distinguishes between the male and the female and if it is a juvenile it will be shorter in length yes, compared to the adults is. so these are specifications of how you can see them how you will spot them when you see you know that they are the ones and they have bright red colored wonderful beaks mm -hmm. which are always busy doing or something mm -hmm. or nibbling on something or the other yes wow uh, um, apart from that do we are we missing anything else about the bird mm -hmm. No. No. So we have covered almost everything. Uh, remember their status is not yet normal. It's not least concerned yet. So be careful when you spot them. Make sure that they are doing well around and uh, they are not threatened by other people. If you find out that they, they have a little stress for to investigate the stress but uh, we only mean from your window. We don't mean that you actually try to bring them home and investigate the stress <laughs> that's the right thing that's the right thing you may think that you're rescuing them from whatever may be the threat to them but as you have to let them be outside even if they are to be taken away by a predator you have to still hold it in <laughs> because that's nature <laughs> because that's nature they will learn to survive hmm. oh, wonderful that's a good idea hmm. even if you see that two birds are fighting uh, let them sort it out on their own hmm. uh, that's all for Alexandrian parakeets they are wonderful birds and we must have them many more many more many more uh, in today's time when so much technology is there and we all can communicate with each other we can definitely help uh, our bird friends to flourish better mm. and we can all share our experiences uh, to keep on knowing more about more birds you can visit this channel we are both going to discuss many more birds that we are personally experiencing what they are like as well as many birds that max happens to know uh, i happen to be learning about them uh, we'll be discussing here in detail almost about anything about them uh, how you can spot them how you identify them uh, what are their uh, family patterns what is their habitat um, why if they are declining what are the reasons why their population is declining etc so all of that knowledge we will be covering in one video every time uh, keep coming back and you can also check out our Patreon if you, you think you must support us. Okay, for those of you who are wondering what to do when you spot a bird. It's like for the first time you're going to see Alexandrian parakeet. You saw it, you know it, what it is like. It's a green bird, a big nice bird, a uh, little bit bulky. Like Max said, it is about 200 to 300 grams and quite long too. So it is not possible that you're going to miss it. Once you see it, you've seen it. And when you start seeing them or, you know, often again and again, what do you do after that? What I do, uh, you know, I get connected to birds. So once I've seen them, I know about them. Then I get connected to them. I, whenever the next time there is a sound of the bird, I go running to the window to see how many of them are there. How close is it? Is it what is it doing exactly? It is a normal habit of mine, even Max's, that we go rushing to the window just to see, check on them. What are they up to? Are they okay? Are they not? Or whatever they are doing. It's a pleasant sight just to go and watch them. So we also do a lot of birding by the ear. So the moment we hear their sound, we want to see where they are, how far they are how close they are and if they happen to be around uh, we spend some time just looking at them admiring the beauty sometimes i do take a picture without them knowing because some uh, the moment uh, you take out the phone or the camera without even a flash there's something about these birds they just 
like to go away maybe they don't like cameras maybe they already know people are doing something with these things i don't know so i quietly take a picture uh, often on the phone the camera quality isn't good so the distance uh, distant photos aren't good so what i do i like to paint them i like to describe what i feel like when i watch them uh, that joy i like to share with people so we also have a private forum dedicated to birders and birding just like birding stan right here uh, so i write a thought or two what i you know felt while watching them when they were doing what they do the best just being themselves uh, just nibbling on something or the other busy with each other sometimes they also pr do printing right yes. max uh, what is printing can you tell people well when a bird uh, tidies its feathers usually they take a oil from the rump and put it all over the wings to make it useful in flight and to make it water resistant birds are quite intelligent and they are you know uh, very very smart when it comes to their survival people and how to maintain people may think that birds only do everything by instinct but that's not true birds are very strong memory mm -hmm. and also also they can recognize color very well most of the decisions and send the thought process happens with color if it turns out that they do not like the color of your phone let's say mm -hmm. they'll always run away because they think it's a danger i think that's what happens with me maybe our phone our phone is not colored properly for them maybe it's a danger for them yeah so they are pretty smart they don't uh, even you may think you're smarter and they are just birds and you may lure them with something to eat or something like that but they have a lot of self respect i have tried that and don't try that also, yourself yes. it does not work it does not work it has some also birds did some birds are also known to store food food in certain places in the ground they dig a little mud get a few leaves off the ground put food and then and close it and they can remember about thousands of these food stashes wow that's why they don't respond to me uh, anyway um, it's a bad habit i don't encourage this habit but i like to befriend them and it's it does a bit, not happen it, it's a, sometimes it's unethical to feed birds like migrate to sure. wee birds they have to migrate if they get obsessed with the food and forget to migrate and probably the life cycle will be incomplete or they could die of weather so do let us know what you do when you spot a bird when you know uh, if you like watching them you spend good amount of time just looking at them observing them what they are doing what do you do after you know uh, experiencing their presence around you because i i just love to spend more time on thinking about them on painting uh, on creating certain things knowing more about them if i know already how they sound how they are identified i want to know more about them certain fascinating facts about them that i can connect with more uh, like the alexandrians they can talk uh, although i have not heard them talk yet uh, because they are out in the open those in the captivity so there are a lot of things that these birds fascinate us with uh it's amazing to know birds and uh, it's a great hobby to be birding that's what we both like mm -hmm. a lot